Hello fellow YouTubers, this is N0 AGI. I'm here to do a short video. And today's video is about how do I program this XPR Motorola XPR 4550 um, from a remote location. So let's say this radio is uh, deployed at a remote site that you can't physically get to. Uh, and you want to be able to program it uh, with your Motorola CPS software. Uh, let's say you want to update its code plug or uh, make sure you update its firmware, etc., etc. How do you accomplish that uh, without having an opportunity uh, to be there physically at the radio site? Um, and the way to do that is to be able to expose the radio as a device as if it were locally plugged into your laptop so that's the objective of today's uh, video to be able to program this XPR 4550 uh, from my laptop which is right about here so let's get started um, so I've been exploring several products in the market and I think one of the products was to um, uh, was uh, suggested to me by um, a good friend of mine, KC0OUZ Adam, and he um, suggested uh, this product called Virtual Here. The product comes in uh, two uh, components. The first component is a server, and the second component is a client. The server component is a piece of software that runs on your remote site, the place where your radio or your repeater is installed. And the client is a piece of software that runs on your laptop, like for example on my laptop here. Um, so in my situation what I have is a, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that has uh, that is currently connected up to a local LAN. It's got a uh, a USB stick attached to one of the USB ports, and it's got the XPR uh, 5550 uh, connected up uh, to the Raspberry Pi uh, to one of the other USB ports, and uh, the server software runs on that Raspberry Pi. And uh, and the way to get the software is go into the uh, Linux USB server page on the Virtual Here website, and then basically you scroll down and locate your bits and binaries and install it on your. There's instructions here, as you can tell. For example, that's the instructions on how to install it on your Linux box, etc. And once you get it installed, um, you're all set to go. The, the Raspberry Pi um, now has the software running. You can modify your init.d and make sure the software runs uh, on startup. And just so when you reboot your Raspberry Pi, the virtual here software, um, you know, starts up at, uh, after the boot. So that's the server side. On the client side, if you go into the client menu, uh, the product supports Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. And obviously I'll be trying with Windows on my Windows 10 laptop here. And I've already installed uh, the software on my PC here. And it shows up as a, a local client tray application. When you open it up, it pulls up the product like so. And uh, the product can be run on trial version. I believe you get a couple of days uh, trial. Uh, because the network, or rather, because the Raspberry Pi is running on the same network as my uh, laptop is, the client is able to automatically discover uh, the servers or our, it's, it calls it hubs, USB hubs. Um, and then those discovered USB server hubs get listed here in this white space. But let's go ahead and, and uh, manually specify a USB server hub. And the way you do that is to add, uh, click on the specify hubs, and then click on add 
and then you specify the IP address. So in my case, it is 76.164.15.20, and the port number, the default port number is 7575. And once you do that, um, and click on it, and close, you are now, um, it's going to connect to that USB port on that Raspberry Pi, like as if it were um, local ports for you. So right now, the Virtual Here client has uh, refreshed itself, and it discovered the Raspberry Hub, and the two USB devices attached to it. The first one there is the uh, the USB stick, the second is the XPR4550. Now, the way you use that in your laptop is by right-clicking on the device. So, for example, when I right-click here and say use that USB stick, it shows up as a drive on your, on your laptop. And as you can tell, Windows 10 has discovered G. Uh, as a drive when I open the Windows Explorer uh, you can uh, go into G and let's see if I can get this focused so that's a sample drive so your remote USB device shows up as if it were plugged into your own laptop uh, physically only virtually so that's the USB stick that's sitting on the Raspberry Pi. You can uh, do whatever, just like you would a regular um, uh, uh, USB stick or regular uh, local drive. Okay, so that's the, the USB stick. But what we are interested, let me close off uh, virtual here website. Um, cancel that. And let's go into the Motorola 4550, right click and use that device. Now that radio is available to you as your local, uh, local USB device. Now typically what you would see in Windows 10 is a slide out uh, actionable uh, tile and then basically you would uh, it would ask you whether you want to allow that network or not you say yes and then basically you're giving uh, Windows uh, permissions to use the device uh, as a network device so as you probably know uh, Motorola radios when you physically plug them into your laptop the radios appear as a network device and that's exactly what's happening even with virtual here so now that we have uh, uh, chosen to use the Motorola XPR4550, uh, let's go into uh, CPS, the Motorola CPS software, and launch that. And uh, let's go into read. As you can tell, I don't have that radio plugged in. It's uh, it's plugged in remotely into that uh, Raspberry Pi. And uh, we'll now read that radio remotely. And let's get started with that. So now it's going to read that radio like as if it is plugged into your local laptop. So that's the code plug for that radio. Let's select general settings. That's my XPR4550. Let's change it to something else here. Let's call that dash or star. XPR4550 star. And let's uh, write that and it's writing and then let's go over to the radio here it says program mode it 
takes a little bit longer obviously because it's going through USB over internet stack and as you saw the the name was changed to uh, whatever we had and a start at the end of it uh, let's go to utilities radio info firmware oh actually not that radio settings power backlight squelch intro scheme LED. what Well, anyways, let's. Uh, this might be the easiest. Let's powering down. There it is with the star. So let's go back to zone. Let's go to Medina. okay so that's it really make sure when you do your uh, Raspberry Pi uh, you open up the 7550 port uh, rather 7575 port and point that port over to whatever server you're using in this case I'm pointing that to this Raspberry Pi so that's a quick uh, summary guys and I uh, thought this uh, was a good idea to kind of share with the group at large and um, the one of the benefits uh, let's say you had a similar setup for a, a Raspberry Pi connected up to your Motorola SLR 5700 repeaters at remote site you can now get to the repeater uh, through the programming software CPS software and programmatically control it uh, remotely, which would be really interesting and valuable. Anyways, this is N0AGI, clear.